Well, you guys asked for this, so I'm giving you guys part four of five upgrades to five eternally hyped fragrances. But this time, I want to actually start the video by giving you a little bit of insight into the process of how I put this video together. It starts by simply scouring my fragrance collection, looking for fragrances that I know are very popular, that are talked about a lot, that have high ratings from a lot of people, that are hyped, that are in a lot of videos. And after doing three of these already, honestly, it's becoming harder and harder to find those fragrances, but we keep finding them. So after I locate a fragrance that I wanna use, I go to Fragrantica, I find it here, and then I look at the number of votes that it has. I zoomed in so you can't see the fragrance because I don't wanna spoil it yet. Again, this series is based off of traffic and traction using Fragrantica as a little bit of a barometer to judge how popular a fragrance is here in the fragrance community. One of the most common ways for people to engage with fragrances on Fragrantica is by way of voting, more so than common. Commenting. You're always going to see more votes on a fragrance page than you're going to see comments because voting is just way easier to do. It takes way less time. So more people are going to do it. Nonetheless, in general with humans, for some reason with many things, we do things in thirds. So a third of people vote regularly, a third of people vote every now and then, and a third of people will never vote. So when you see the number of votes, we can pretty much presume that the number of votes we see on the fragrance is only a portion of the traffic of people that either have seen this on Fragrantica or actually own and enjoy this fragrance. So most of the traffic is actually invisible. So when you see thousands of votes on a fragrance, that's a popular fragrance. We're looking at at least one to 2,000 votes or more that I'm deeming hyped or popular. And we're not talking about the actual rating. I don't care about that. I'm just looking at numbers in terms of traffic. In every video so far, I've been using my fragrance Second Soul as a little bit of an example of the other side of how this works. This fragrance has been out for a little bit more than a year. It is a limited release if you don't know anything about it. Maybe you're new here but you might wanna check this out before the end of the year because it's most likely going to be disappearing. But this fragrance has about 124 votes as of this video. It gets a little bit more each time I do one of these, so those of you who are voting, I really appreciate it. It's, it's a measly number of votes, but it means a lot to me. And that's after a whole year of visibility and exposure on the market. But as I've used in a previous episode, for example, Le Mal Elixir, which came out just earlier this year, maybe within the last six months, is all already sitting at, you gotta see this, over 2,600 votes. So time is not necessarily the biggest factor here. We're talking about dissemination. We're talking about hype. Yeah. Just selecting the final of the five replacements. By the way, to you that took a few seconds, for me, it took like 25 minutes to find all these replacements. Ho, oh, brother, ho. Oh. You know what I'm talking about, guys? These videos take a long time. They take a long time. I appreciate your support. Watch the videos of your favorite creators. They take a long time. Thank you. Okay, okay. All of that took like 40 minutes, guys. But we're probably like barely five minutes into the video. But let's get started, shall we? All right, first fragrance up. Super hyped on Fragrantica has about 3.8K votes at the moment. I'm sure that'll keep going up as time goes on. I do have a lot of people asking me about this fragrance, but I don't really talk about it. I have it, I like it, but I don't love it. It doesn't move me. It's not super exciting. It's just really nice. It's a fragrance I describe as sweet, boozy, and alluring. This is from Initio. It's called Side Effect. Probably one of the more popular fragrances from their original collection. Yeah, it's like a boozy vanilla, maybe a little bit of tobacco in there. Very simple, but effective. Not exciting, but good. But honestly, guys, the fragrance that I have to replace Side Effect, I'm going to say this objectively. This is just better. I haven't said that about any of the fragrances in any parts of this series, but this one is just better. It's just a richer, more complex experience, but still very beautifully blended. Still comes across as very easy to wear, something easy to get next to. Also boozy, also alluring, also sweet from an indie brand known as Day 3 Fragrances. They call this Ambar. Dominicano. Guys, there's a few fragrances from this brand that I'm loving, but I am just smitten with this fragrance. Warm, spicy cinnamon, boozy rum. You get a very distinctive Coca-Cola accord, like rum and Coke, very, very authentically in here, but lots of warm, spicy, sweet cinnamon and vanilla. Some warm benzoin, so it does have this 
kind of resinous feel as it dries down. It's definitely a little bit woody, but overall very smooth, very cozy, very attractive, and very long lasting. If that's something you're looking for, it's an extra de parfum. It performs like one. It wears heavy without being overwhelming. Three to four sprays is all I really need to enjoy this one. Incredible, and honestly, if you're asking me, a billion times better than side effect, if you're asking me. If you're not asking me, I'll see you later. That is Ambar Dominicano from Day 3 Fragrances. Next one up, you know it, you love it. You might hate it. You might just think it's okay. Either way, it's popular, it's well known, it has over 10,000 votes on Fragrantica. It's been around for almost 15 years, maybe more than that. There's a reason why it's still on the shelves, it is a bestseller from the house of Tom Ford, and it's Oud Wood. Give it up for Oud Wood, everyone. I like Oud Wood. I didn't always like Oud Wood, but I do like it now. It actually happens to be my most worn Tom Ford fragrance, which kind of surprises me. It's not my favorite from the house, but it is one of my most functional, but also something that I do find a little bit interesting. I classify it as chic, woody, and warm. It is a warm, spicy, slightly sweet vanilla, smooth, but medicinally oody wood fragrance. Again, very, very classy stuff. Wears kind of light and nuanced, does not attack you, which I think lends to the vibe that it has. It is a very distinctive vibe, one that I truly respect. So oud wood, it's a joy to wear, but it's everywhere. What do we have instead? From perfumer Claude Deer, if you are a fan of Zaharoff's fragrances, pretty much every fragrance aside from four of the six Zed Creators fragrances have been created by Claude Deer, a very experienced seasoned perfumer who's been doing this for decades. And for Amarud, he created Oud Du Jour. At one point in time, this was my favorite from the house. When I got this, it blew me away. This is a dark, warm, spicy, fruity oud. Lots of plum and raspberry. You get a warm, spicy saffron. The oud in here is darker and, and slightly drier, but not edgy in any way. It is very luxurious smelling. Gives you a similar vibe as oud wood. It's not super strong. It's not super enveloping, but it does smell of high quality and it is long lasting while not being crazy room filling, but who really needs that anyway? Highly recommend checking this out because no one really talks about it. I haven't talked about it for some time, but it's back. Oud du jour from Amaroud. If this one ain't hyped, I don't know what is. With 4,000 votes on Fragrantica, which is lower than you might expect, but again, that's just a fraction of the traffic, but it's still a lot. From Mancera, this is Instant Crush. I got this fragrance when it came out. It was sent to me along with several other reviewers. There was a little bit of a crush gate, if you will. It didn't actually have that name, but all of our videos dropped at the same time and we all got a bunch of crap from people saying that we were bought out and blah, blah, blah. And that is honestly nothing new. It still happens today. I do try to avoid it like the plague if I can though. I do have a review up of this fragrance. It is a genuine review. I do like Instant Crush. I've enjoyed wearing it over the years. My wife enjoys wearing it and smelling it on me. I describe it as loud, sweet, and smooth. But another way you can describe it is kind of a more vanillic, stronger, less airy, more creamy version of Baccarat Rouge 540. Not exact, but it's close. It's definitely inspired by it. We cannot deny that. It's very good at what it does. It does smell very sexy. It is perfectly unisex, but everybody knows this fragrance. What else we got? Also fairly loud, quite smooth and sweet. One of the most unique rose fragrances that I've come across. This is so beautiful. This is called Click Song from Unuit Nomad. And this is a damp and earthy resinous rose. I get lots of patchouli and labdanum backing up the rose. It kind of engulfs the rose. So it's not rose heavy, but it is definitely rose present. It is kind of rich while still having a little bit of a freshness to it, but it's not what I'd call a fresh fragrance. It is sweet and resinous, damp and earthy, almost an ambery facet to the rose. Very elegant, dances in the air, but it stays with you and it leaves a beautiful trail. Perhaps something that's a little bit more interesting and unique than Instant Crush, which is based off of a very well-known scent personality. But if you want something outside of that trail, I would check out Click Song. This is beautiful. With 5,700 votes, honestly should have many more, but again, just a fraction. From Amouage, I think this is probably their best seller. This is at least one of the most popular ones from the brand in the community. This is Reflection Man. Now, if you haven't noticed, pretty much all these fragrances I at least like. I'm not just sitting here talking about fragrances I don't like saying we need to stop talking about them. I wear them from time to time and I like them to varying degrees. Reflection Man, I love. This is one of my first niche fragrance loves, so 
I'm not saying we should stop talking about this, but what I am saying is that we've talked about it a lot. There's not really much else to say about it. So why not respectfully talk about other things? It is something I call powdery, musky, and gentle. What can we replace this with? Well, if you've tried Reflection Man, you know this is not an easy replacement. We're not looking for a one-to-one -one clone. We're not looking for a look-alike. We're looking for something that achieves the same vibe with those three words that I use to describe it, and one that does do that in a slightly different way, but with some similar facets from Adamo. This is called Numero Uno. This is a gorgeous fragrance, multifaceted, beautifully complex, musky, powdery, and floral by way of violet. Lots of violet in here, sweet and powdery, very elegant with a lot of rum, a woody warmth that backs it up. Doesn't smell exactly like anything else out there, but it achieves kind of the same vibe while honestly being a little bit more multi-dimensional than Reflection Man. I'm not saying it's better, it is quite different. I'm gonna link to it down below. I hope you're able to get your hands on it either in bottle form or discovery set, but I think some of you have already tried this one. If you have, go ahead and sound off in the comments what you think of numero uno. Succulent, warm, and elegant. You know it, you probably love it. Some people don't like it, and that's okay. This is one of the most popular fragrances from the house of Nishane, and it's Ani. Yet again, a fragrance that I really like. I'm a huge fan of Cecile Zerokian, who is the perfumer behind this, and I have many fragrances from her that I truly love. This is an amber vanilla based fragrance with some slightly sharp fruity elements to it. I think there's a lot of black currant in here, maybe some citrus. There's a juiciness to the fragrance while being smooth, creamy, and succulent. And it wears in a delicious way without smelling overly edible. Very alluring, but still high class. However, with 4,700 volts on Fragrantica, it is no stranger. Let's talk about something that's a little bit more of a stranger. And don't worry, there's no danger here. Don't be afraid. Not every stranger wants to lure you into their van with candy. Some of them do though. Run from those. From a relatively unknown brand here on YouTube, a UK based house with South African roots and inspirations. This is called a Qualis. That's the brand and they call this Kruger. Now I know this bottle is eye catching and I know gold flakes is not anything new, but it's also nose catching. What? Not the most effective phrase, but I think you know what I mean. The scent matches and there's a lot of thoughtfulness behind this fragrance. It's also succulent, warm and elegant based around vanilla and rose. There's a smooth, warmth to the scent, creamy, sweet, nuanced. The way it hangs in the air is so beautiful. There is a slightly fresh woody quality to it, but it is warm and ambery and again, succulent. This is an incredible wearing experience. If you love vanilla, you have to try this. It smells so natural. No sharp edges here. I highly recommend getting a discovery set from Aqualus. They have a lot of really interesting yet beautiful and easy to wear fragrances to check out. So this is just one of them, probably the most visually attractive one. This is Kruger. All right, so there's part four in the books. I want to know what you think of these fragrances. If you've tried them, either the super hyped ones, what do you think of them, or the lesser talked about ones. If you've tried any of these, I want to know what you think. But if you haven't tried them, there's going to be links down in the description for you to get aboard this train. Don't miss it. I'm trying to put you on game to the lesser hyped stuff. There's a lot of beautiful fragrances out here to discover. And here's just another tip of another iceberg. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.